hello, hello, hello. How is everyone doing today? I, uh, I'm late, but I'm early, but I'm late. Uh, I had some stuff to do. I, I, I thought I timed it right. I, I thought I had timings correct, and I'd be home by two. Um, I was off by about 23 minutes. Is close enough. How y'all doing today? Something happened today. I don't know what happened today. Something came out. I don't know. We'll talk about it later. Ah, tonight we're going to do the thing I haven't done. We're going to play with a Delta printer after I hide all my information so I don't have to blur it out on stream again. So tonight, Super Racer, Speed Racer, Super Racer, FL Sun, Super Racer. We are building ourselves a Delta printer. I don't have a Delta printer. I got Core X, Z, Core X, Y, bed flingers. No Delta. We're going to fix that tonight. We got a Delta. FL Sun uh, reached out to me. Yo, man, you want to build a printer? I said, yes. And so they sent me a printer. Do I have any shipping info on that side? No, I did not. Unless it's in Chinese. Um, so today we will be building the FL Sun Super Racer. And... Yes, we are going to talk about the thing that everyone's probably going to want to talk about throughout the entire stream. So, we'll do that after. But first, big first, shout out to Thanks for sponsoring the stream tonight. October is coming up. That means Halloween. And these are some fun little models that I've been printing off. And I actually had another one, but it's not done yet. So it's still going. Uh, maybe it'll be done by the end of the stream. But we're going to print one tonight. But Chaos Cortec, you know them. Uh... I love their models. I'm a huge fan of their work. And right now, for Spooktember and then Oxpookter, Spooktober, I can't remember what they're calling it, uh, pretty much a model a day. So they've been putting out all these awesome Halloween models. Honestly, these are really cool. Um, so I've already printed a bunch of these. I think we're going to print the little ghost ducky tonight. We're going to print one of these tonight, uh, or this afternoon. We're not even this afternoon. We're not even tonight. It's early. It's early. All the European folks are here. I'm going to have to speak French or something at some point. Bonjourno. So anyways, if you want to print one of these awesome models, they're on Thangs. They're sponsoring the show tonight. Link in the description. Uh, so get yourself some Thangs and thank you for sponsoring the stream tonight. Um, these Harry Potter ones, uh, my wife loves these because my wife's a huge Harry Potter nerd. Um, so I printed these off for her. So she liked those. And then Bob Ross. Everyone likes Bob Ross. And Casper. Ghost butt. So, tonight, I keep saying tonight. It's not tonight. It's this afternoon. I've got my ice cap. Uh, Bob the Slav, 2 euro. Thank you. Appreciate it. Can you show us the Revo or talk about it? It's in there. So, yeah. So, since about June... What is now known as the Revo, the E3D V7, has been living in V226. Everything I have printed in ABS in the past three months, so all of Yukon, the uh, the Urkfa, that's all ABS. Everything I've printed in ABS in the past three months has been printed on a V7. Um, if you bought a hot end in the over the weekend, you done goofed. Because honestly, um, I'm swapping over all my machines that I print often on to uh, Revos. And no, I won't show you it. Because not everything's been shown yet. But, to show proof that I'm not pulling your chain. There is the eight millimeter nozzle break. All in one. And it's bimetallic. How can it be bimetallic? Slice owns the patent on bimetallic. No, they don't. But yes, um, we'll talk about it once we get this printer built and printing. Because this is this is the FL Sun Super Racer stream, not the Revo stream. I might, if you guys want, maybe I'll put together a video where I talk about it and my experiences. Again, I have a beta unit. I was in the beta. I didn't even see the production unit until today with the rest of you guys. 
So all my experiences on this are based off of a beta unit that I've had since June. So it's not the final production. Um, it was a beta unit, so there were quirks. So I obviously can't make critique of the production, but based off of the beta, um, yeah, I it, it's the future. Let's get some music going. You guys want some music? Let's get some music. Uh, Richard, three euro. Thank you. Appreciate it. So the heater block is floating between the nozzle and the heat sink. The heater block is an all one unit. So it has a heater and thermistor in it. And it is like legit voodoo what E3D pulled off because it's only a 40 watt and it outperforms most standard flow hot ends with a 50 watt in it. Ooh. Oh, this is gonna be fun. So let me make some room here. Cause I have a bench over here now. Um, but I have stuff on it. So let me make some room here. Yeah, I was hoping to get home sooner so I wouldn't have to like, I'd be able to do a little bit more prep work before going live, but uh, that didn't happen. So it is what it is. Sure, I can go there. Yeah, I wish the beta did have those ring colors. But, uh, beta. So, um, FL Sun, Super Racer. I was so disappointed. I thought it was called the Speed Racer. I thought it was called the Speed Racer for the longest time. Um, and it's a Super Racer. And that kind of annoys me because I was going to do a whole shtick about a video where I'd, like, do the, the crappy uh, anime dubbing where I would talk, like, I would overdub myself with the wrong words um, because of Speed Racer and make a whole thing out of it. But no, it's Super Racer. So I'm kind of disappointed in that. More Nero Ross. I have the wig upstairs somewhere. Yeah, tomorrow I think more info on the, uh, it is coming out about it. So we'll, like, we'll talk about it once we get this printer built. I'm sure you guys all have questions. I won't show it off. Um, I have a video of the nozzle swap. Ooh. Oh, cool. Comes pre-assembled. So obviously this is a Delta printer for those that don't know. Um, this is a Delta. It has MGN 12 rails. Oh, this is, oh my God, this thing's going to be huge. So I'm gonna move everything over here. Oh God, this thing's gonna be huge. So Joel built one of these a little while ago um, and it went very well for him. So I'm hoping I have a repeat here. Um, and everything goes well. Uh, those colors, yes, Tim, um, I was speaking with Sanjay. Um, those are like an ISO standard or whatever, like engineering standard. Okay, what else do we got? Okay, we got the effector. I'm gonna hate the Bond Tech clone, oh. What? Okay, so they do have a blog about it already, I guess. So this guy comes with, let me zoom in a bit. There we go. So we have a, uh, a volcano clone, I guess, in here. Uh, here is the effector. So, uh, so this is what we have to work with. This is what we're going to do to make it better at some point, And we're going to have fun seeing if this will fit, which that'll fit. That's nice and small. That'll fit. We'll make it work. Oh, David's here. Everyone say hi, David. I'm sorry. I've not been watching chat. I, I, I know chat's going insane. I uh, can't wait for you to put Clipper on and run 10K, 100K XL. YOLO. We are going to send it. I'm going to run it stock for a bit, obviously. I got to run it stock for a bit, but 
Oh, okay, so here's some of my arms. There's the arms. The effector. Let me... I should be reading the instructions. Thomas, ARS20, thank you, appreciate it. How am I feeling? I'm feeling awesome. My phone's been exploding. Okay, take out all the main parts. Put the top shelf on a flat surface. Please prevent the screen from being bumped during the assembly. Okay, let's get the top. So I will say, um, FL Sun, the packaging is very good on this guy. Um, it's that dense foam. Okay, so that goes like that with the logo towards me. Uh, got that. Ooh. Okay, there's stuff under there. I'm like, I know my table's not flat, but it shouldn't be that unflat. So put on flat surface, please prevent the screen from being bumped during the assembly. Install the axis. Which axis? The X axis, the Y axis, the axis of evil. Um, there's a lot of axes. Is axes. I guess it doesn't matter. It's a delta, right? So, it, well, I guess it does matter because like one will be the front. Are they labeled? Oh, they are labeled. Okay. They there is little. They are labeled. Okay. They are labeled, so X. And they're held on with captain tape. Which I'm assuming I gotta... Yeah, there we go. So that's X to X, and that goes in there. And um, I'm going to need screws, so M4s. Stay. Nope. Where are my screws at? Did I take them out already? Oh, here we go. Okay, so I've got a bucket of screws or a bag of screws. I've got an extra hot end, so that's good. Where's my there it is. If you build a lot of printers, go out and get these little magnetic tins. You know these screws aren't magnetic. Yeah, this is a tall Delta. Deltas are tall, like, I don't know. I like Deltas. I think they look really cool to watch. Um, however, like, justifying their existence in today's day and age is kind of harder than it used to be. Um, they're not, they're very, they're, they're space efficient in the XY, not in the Z. And the fact that it's already off screen, um, Okay, so install the screws in orders from one to four. Okay. One axis complete, install the other two. I can do that. Oh, 
Hello from the second to last day at my old job. Woo, new jobs are always good. I need a new job. It's so much fun working for a company that's been bought out by a uh, foreign company and everything's gone to crap and everything's been costed down and quality has gone out the window. And all benefits and bonuses are gone and employee morale is garbage. But we're family. So I have, once I got the word that I was getting this, I actually, when this first came out, I did, well, not when it first came out, but when I seen other people looking at this Delta, um, I did actually look at a few reviews. Um, Cause to be honest, I was actually kind of tempted to maybe buy one. Um, it was reviewing pretty good. It's a modern Delta. Um, I didn't want like an old Castle or anything like that. Cause I, I, I want a Delta to play with. Um, FL Sun reaching out and saying, hey, we'll send you one made it a lot easier. But uh, once I knew one was coming, I like stopped looking at reviews and everything so I can kind of make my own opinion on it. But from what I've seen, everyone seems to think this is a, a pretty good Delta nowadays. So have we discussed three, three Ed stuff yet? We have not discussed any of the three Ed stuff that will be in the future. Once the printer is printing, we will talk about three Ed stuff. But only if you like that smash button and click the link in the description to go visit Thangs and download a few of those models. You know what? Go to the description. Those models that I have linked. I want you to find some you like and hit the like button on them. I want you to do that. Sounds like the Canadian government. Well, here's the funny thing. I love saying that. Because anytime I say, oh, my company was bought out by a foreign investor and everything's kind of gone to poop and everyone's like, yeah, China this or Taiwan that or they list some random company. It's like, I was bought by an American company, American Investment Group. Uh, it's a Voron killer. Then you could try a rat rig. Why does everything have to be a, a killer, right? Can't we be friends? Can't we all just get along? Like, let's be honest. We're just making plastic boats out of plastic. Can't we all just get along? So it looks like the controller is up here. So I'm assuming the low voltage, yeah, because the motors are up here, because this is upside down. Okay, so install the axis, install the bottom shelf. The two logos marked in the photo should be in the same direction. Okay, so luckily the, uh, the bed seems to be pretty secure. Um, Do I need a chair? Uh, why not have both? Honestly, like here's the thing. I would have no, I would love to build a rat rig. Um, I think they're coming out with a mini one. That's what I'd be tempted because I like little printers. Um, I would love to build a rat rig. The thing is, I, I can't justify building a rat rig. I do not need more printers. Like I have more printers that I'll need. Um, so like for me to buy a rat rig would be like a complete waste, honestly. Um, does this sit on anything or does it just kind of slot into position? So. I'm gonna go get um, something to stand on. 
I know I have one somewhere. I don't know where it's at. Shoot. Oh, wait. Maybe it's in the other room. I think you guys could still hear me. Ah, there it is. There we go. Ta-da! Stepladder, what are you doing? There we My wife said no more 3D printers. Actually, no, she, she's fine with this. And yeah, she has no problem with all this stuff. Yeah, I can't use the floor. If I put anything on the floor, it's like the floor is lava, only replace lava with dog hair. Y'all saw my knees. Woo! Okay, so it doesn't call out for this, but now that I have like the top on, I'm like cracking these screws to make sure everything's like lined up. Honestly, deltas are like an art piece. I bet you have fun with the thoughts of the secret that is hidden behind the model. I know exactly what's hidden behind the model. Like, if you watch the video I put out this morning, which that video is actually from June. I filmed that in June when we first got them. Um, it doesn't show everything because there's still stuff you guys don't know about. All will be revealed in due time. Or maybe not. Maybe everything has been revealed and I'm just, you know, messing with you guys because let's be honest, it's fun. Uh, light, wait, Hamera. Yeah, there they redid the Hamera. There is an updated Hamera, um, which is cool. I, you know what? Now that I actually have a Hamera, it, it ain't too bad. I know I kind of poo pooed on them a little bit at first, but now that I actually have one in hand, and comparing it to other uh, direct feed all in ones, it ain't bad. The uh, lightweight Hamera paired with the Revo is probably going to be a dang good combo. I will say. Uh, Frank, five euro. Thank you. Appreciate it. Are the enclosed deltas or does that make sense at all? Yeah, you can enclose a delta. A delta is actually a really easy printer to enclose because everything's self-contained. You can just slap panels on them usually. So it's kind of like, you know, how like a Voron, a V2, like all Vorons are designed to be self-enclosed. It, it, it's easier because you can just slap panels on them. Unlike things like, you know, an Ender 3 where they're not designed for enclosures. So... You have wires sticking out and like stuff sticks past the frame. On a Delta, everything's usually. How's the painting coming along? Are you going to go back to Warhammer? I found some of my Warhammer models. Um, I have a case of actual, not 40K, but I actually have some of my old Warhammer models that I thought I didn't have anymore. Um, I thought I had lost them when my... Uh, when I lost my 40k stuff, but nope, I still have them. 
I liked 40k more. Like I was just starting to get into like Warhammer uh, when I got out. And the reason I got out when I was in when I was playing 40k and tabletop games and whatnot, I was in college and we had a games workshop in town at the mall. And so as I, I, I don't live in town. I live like outside of town, like half hour away from like city center. So driving into the college or leaving the college, I would stop at the local games workshop and play, right? But what happened was, is um, two things. I finished college, well, I dropped out. Um, so my college ended and at the same time, the local games workshop closed. So where everyone went to was like on the other side of the city that I had no reason to go there except to play the games. And that like, I wasn't gonna go driving 45 minutes, you know, to go play games. Like I just, that and you know, none of the people I played with played there and it was just kind of like, well, this sucks and it just kind of killed it. Uh, Warhammer 40K are two separate. Yeah, they're, okay, so there's, there's Warhammer and then there's Warhammer 40K. So they're both Warhammer, but Warhammer 40K is, you know, the Space Marine and all that. And then 40K is like uh, dungeons and, you know, like fantasy. Um, and the rules are different. So it's not like just different models. Okay, so we put that on, install the screws, slide the touch screen bracket nut into the left groove side. Is this it? Oh, no, it looks like a, a ball joint. Oh, there it is. And then there's the, yeah, Fate, Fate has picked the wrong day to release a new hot end. Sorry, Fate is. Okay, that goes there, I guess, okay. Move the touchscreen bracket to one third distance from the top shelf. Rotate the knob. Rotate the printer 180 degrees. The logo is facing the front. So this goes there. So as you can see, this goes there. And now we pivot. Whoa. One ten. There we go. Okay, so you got like a little pendant. Oh, that's cool. I'm gonna move this up a bit. There we go. How many printers do I have right now? In this room with the super racer now. One, two, three. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have ten in this room, two in the other room, um, and I've already given away one printer to a family member. Oh. Ah, wrong button. There's the right button. Okay. Rotate the printer so the logo is facing the front. There we go. Logo is facing the front. What am I on? Oh, okay, so it does have little feet underneath. It just, my desk is not flat. Okay. Pull the parallel arms both sides and install. Okay, so it looks like I'm putting these in. Anything special about the face? I have no clue. I don't know anything about the Fetus' new hot end. Okay, good. So these aren't, um, I don't think it matters. These are carbon fiber, it looks like. And these are good. I was worried that these would be magnetic 
um, because I, I'm gonna slap a, an orbiter on here and I was worried about weight. Um, weight on a Delta. Uh, Travis, thank you for coming to member. How does the E3D ring heater conduct heat to the nozzle? Science. No, um, the heater block is round and cylinder and the nozzle screws up through it. And if you look at the nozzle, you have this like flat on the bottom. So the heater is pushing up against that. And then also this whole part right here, the melt zone is pretty much like slip fit inside the uh, heater block. So it's pretty much full contact. It's like slip fit, it's like a ream fit. Um, so you have direct contact there. And then also the heater block has a spring pushing it down on here. So when you screw it in, it bottoms out on this little flange here. So for those that have a Hemera, this part right here uh, is pretty much one-to-one -one the Hemera uh, heat break in terms of like it screws in and bottoms out. And then this right here is the, uh, that, and it's bimetallic, so. It, it works good. Like, this is legit something new, but I'll, I'll, like, maybe I'll heat it up for you guys and I'll show you how good it is. Okay. So we have those in there. I gotta move these up. Okay. Still the other two the same way. Oh my God. I'll leave that up there. Uh, install the effector. Does it matter which way it goes? Oh, okay, so the logo goes to the front, I'm assuming. They have like dollops of grease on this already. So it's like, everything's all greasy now. It's like, ah. There we go. Ooh, look, it's a Delta, guys. Neat. Yeah, grease. What happens to the nozzle clogs? Um, I don't know. I haven't had it clog on me yet. It is nozzle removable. The whole nozzle break is a one unit assembly. It's a one piece thing. Okay, effectors installed. Connect the cables. Okay. This is going together very well. Like these instructions aren't bad. Um, so I'm actually having a fun time building this. I think this is going together pretty well. I don't know what these cables are for. Oh, that's for the extruder. Okay. So these are color coded. So. So am I supposed to take this out? Okay, I'll get, I'll get to that later. Yeah, I'll get to that later. Oh, because no, the extruder goes through there. Okay, I see. So these are color coded. So red to red, um, yellow to yellow. I have two black ones. Well. Oh. Okay, so that's that, that's that. Sure, I, I can dig it. Um, I'm assuming those are the same. Okay, so this level, which I'm gonna leave off. Uh, Fetus is not owned by BQ. Fetus and uh, Triangle Labs are two separate companies. They go through Runis, 
for manufacturing the hot ends. Okay, so that's that. Plug the cables in. Install the main power connector. Were these fittings called aircraft fittings or? I'm gonna have to like zip tie that out of the way. Oh, put the cane cable into the groove in the axis. Okay. There we go. That works. Okay. Install the extruder. So this is nice. It actually has like a little clip. Um, So that way, like, even when it's not screwed in, it's not going to fall on you. Uh, M38. Or M48. Are these M4s? M4. Everything on here is M4. Wi-Fi box? I have no idea what that is. I've seen that. I don't know what that is. I, I think it's just like a basic interface. I think they're using like an ES32 or something. Zero sucks with a webcam. Yeah, uh, Pi Zero's R Raspberry. If somebody here is working with the Raspberry people, put out a Raspberry Pi Zero that has the MCU from the Pi 3B on it. That's all I want. Because then you can use a ribbon cable, you got your one USB, maybe put two USBs on it and like two gigs of RAM. But just make it that small form factor. That's all I want. Okay, that goes there. Install the intruder. This goes into here. So we do have a BMG clone of some sort. Um, with really crappy molding. Um, I do have an extra LGX now because uh, Bontech sent me one. So now I have an extra LGX. So if this fails, I can put an LGX in here um, or I can put the orbiter in it. Okay, filament runouts in, that's in, that's there. That's good there, that's good there. Uh, 3A, not enough. Um, that guy has a, th a th or no, a 3A. Yeah, I have a 3A right here. 3A is right here. Um, the 3A is fine. Um, 3A runs fine. I, I, I ran this on a printer with a webcam for a while. It was fine. The thing is with those like non-Raspberry Raspberry Pis is they're all like proprietary and there's no guarantee that the firmware will work and always be um, consistent. Because I know, I um, can't remember if it was main to sale or fluid. Somebody was looking into converting that or making it um, compatible with the orange pies. And it just became kind of a pain in the butt because it's like there's too many differences to always guarantee that it's always going to be in line. Uh, 40C chamber is enough. Yes. Yeah, get a pie. Like, honestly... All my printers here have Raspberry Pis in them, okay? Just buy cheap Pis. If you don't care about a webcam, just use a Pi Zero. Um, otherwise, get like a Pi 3 Air, just whatever Pi you can get cheap right now, unfortunately. And then just go on Amazon and buy the cheapest tablet you can get and just bookmark all the pages and just go doot, doot, doot. And then you can load up all the interfaces. 
Because like I have a computer right here. So all these printers I run just off the interface on my computer. I barely use the touch screens on them. Problem with the Pi 4 compute module, you need another port to do anything with it. Okay, plug that in, that's plugged in, that's plugged in, that's plugged in. Tie the PTFE tube and the uh, main cable together. What? What do you mean tie them together? Tie the PTFE tube and the main cable together at the location marked in the photo. Okay, did you guys give me a zip tie to do that? The problem is that is a very small photo. Oh, I got a baggie of goodies here, let's see. Is there a zip tie in here? Nope. But they did give extra, oh, they did. There we go, zip tie. Do I ever get Wi-Fi connection drops? Um, I used to when I had a crappy router. Um, I am running a Ubiquity uh, Amplify Alien right now. Um, and I have like literally 20 devices in my house that are connected to it right now. Um, and it handles it like a champ. It also was like $500. <laughs> but literally, it's the best Wi-Fi router I've ever had. So, yeah, I business expense that. <laughs> huh? Joel? Joel! Everyone say hi, Joel. Joel's here, 3D printing nerd. I have not put clipper on it. It hasn't powered up. It needs power before I can put clipper on it. Plus, I need a baseline. You got, you got to get a baseline before you, you make it shine. Okay, what's next? What's next? Uh, assemble the filament holder. Which is this guy. It goes like that. That doesn't look like that. Okay, that works. But does it fold? You know what? It doesn't fold. It doesn't have V-wheels and it's not yellow. So um, the Fukus is better. Uh, Giovanni, yeah, I agree. Like the Ubiquity, it, it, compared to the cheapo router I had, yes, it was expensive. But you know what? Now that I have it, it's worth it. It is so worth it. I used to have so many issues with Wi-Fi once I had like, you know, 10 Raspberry Pis connected at all the time, plus like three computers in the house that are always on, laptop, TVs, like. Uh, which version of the Revo? Mine is the beta unit from June. So it's the last variant of the beta. So this now goes up top. <sighs> This is the problem with deltas. I'm going to need a step ladder in the room now to do anything with this printer. Jesus. I am so high right now. I, I honestly almost don't have enough room. Oh my, you know what? Oh shit. Um, 
So my basement, um, let me fix this camera here. So I did not finish the basement in this house. The basement in this house was finished by the previous owner. And the room I'm in right now, um, the ceilings are dropped because of reasons. So the problem is I could touch the ceiling right here, right? I could touch the ceiling right here. Look how close that filament spool is to the ceiling. And it's not even on the shelf that's two inches taller. I, I might not have enough room <laughs> for this printer on my desk because it's too tall. How tall am I? Uh, 5'10". 5'10", 5'11". I can't remember. 5'10 and a half. We'll go with 5'10 and a half. Okay, install the filament holder. The orientation of the filament holder should be like that. Okay. I do like how they reference stuff. They reference like the logo should be front. All the logos are frontward on it because a Delta you have three points, right? So it's kind of like, where's front? So I do like that. Uh, remove the protective film. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I spoiled some of it. There we go. It's superior metric height. Here's the thing. How much how much set do I have on this thing? Uh, FL Sun. Super Racer. Why does that all 3DP site always come up anytime I look for anything 3D printing related? So apparently they have a pro version now, but this isn't the pro version. So the Super Racer. Okay, I, I don't care what other people have said. Where is the specs? I don't want to ask the question. I want to see the specs. Where is the specs on your printer? Uh, the flow rate on the Revo, you're looking at around 15 to 18 millimeters cubed per second, uh, depending on what plastic you're pushing. Because, you know, ABS flows better than PLA. Uh, basically, it performs in terms of raw output a little bit better than most standard flow hot ends. And really, that's all you need. I'm trying to see how tall this is. What's my print volume? There we go. Okay. Uh, build volume. So the build volume on here is 260 round and 330 millimeters tall. So, um, do I have a tape? I don't have a tape measure in this room, I don't think. No, I don't. Because my son took it because he likes collecting tape measures right now. Um, so not only is it taller than uh, Tallboy, um, it has less Z height than Tallboy by quite a bit. Tallboy is about 380, 390. And uh, yeah, so this printer is a good, I don't know, five, six inches taller, plus the spool on top. And it has 50 or 60 millimeter less Z. So deltas are not Z efficient. They're efficient on the XY, but they are not Z efficient. And even here, this one, you can't really enclose because to get all the way to the edge of the bed, it's uh, out of bounds. So if you enclose it, you're gonna lose a lot of your XY room, but it is what it is. Okay. Okay, so the default input voltage of the printer is 230. Obviously, I already changed that. We are at 115. Use diagonal pliers to clean up the filament on the nozzle. Do I have filament on the nozzle? I think we're turning it on now. I got nothing on the nozzle. Connect the leveling switch. Where is my leveling switch? Okay, so I have my leveling switch. So it's got that so okay i plug the leveling switch in okay 
And then this attaches via magnets, I believe. Okay. So the leveling switch is attached right there. So it's a clicky probe. I gotta plug it in. Okay, uh, let me get some power to it. Ooh. What the heck is this? What the heck is this? Ooh, hey, the bots are here. Do I, I don't know if anyone, if I had a mod here. Uh, one second, guys. Uh, report. Sexual harassment. There you go. Let me take care of the bots. There we go. It's always the same bots. I wish I had different bots. At least they, I wish they, you know, changed it up every now and then. It'd be cool to get something different, but it's always the same bot. Okay, power cable. Plug that in. Turn that on. Ooh, the startup screen is a panther running. Actually, it plays like a proper animation on the screen. Okay. Um, so, okay. So, I'm literally, I'm following this word for word from the instructions. Okay. It's all leveling switch. Click tools. Click auto level. Click auto leveling. Please plug the leveling switch in. I have done that. Yes. So now it's doing the... Uh... There, now it's coming down. Yes, I set the PSU voltage. Yep, I did set that, so we're good there. So I'm assuming it only has to do this once or anytime you want to recalibrate because after that it knows where the bed is and then it just homes up top and then you don't need to plug this in every time I don't think. Yeah, that's the thing about living in North America. If you live in North America and you have this accidentally set at 230, nothing will happen because it'll think it's, you'll, you're only feeding at 115. It's the other way around. It's when you live in Europe and you set it for 115 and you feed it 230, then you let the smoke out and you have a bad time. Watching the stream, wanting to comment, forgot it was not recorded for once and could comment. Exactly, all your, you, the European guys, you guys can watch this live. Honestly, I wish I could do more live streams uh, this time of the day for you guys. I really do. Um, but unfortunately, um, I, I have a full-time job. <laughs> And I work steady afternoon, so it's kind of a limit. See, oh, those are cool. They're, uh, the upper limits are um, optical. Where are you going? I don't know. It's running a routine. I'm just going to let it do its thing. Okay, um, let me check here. Oh, it's doing a bed mesh. Okay. So it's doing that. I'm wondering, it gave me a shitty USB stick. Should I see what's on it or should we? Uh... It came with a microfiber cloth and some sandpaper.
Let's see if Super Slicer has a profile for this. FL Sun. No, they don't have. Cura 411. Okay, let me go download a Cura. I think Deltas are overrated. You know what? Um, yes and no. They, they're definitely, they are a thing. Deltas are a thing that exists. But, you know. Are we done? Okay, that's done. Um, okay, so that's all done. Um, like, let's be honest, if ever, you know, you can always, you know, just not run anything other than a bed flinger. Um, one second, I'm installing Cura right now. Okay, so once that's done, okay, move zero. Please remove the leveling switch. I have done that. Yes. Um. So yeah, like we, everyone could run, you know, the, a, a boring, but you know, it's nice to have variety. Deltas are cool. They're fast. Good thing that didn't crash. Put a piece of paper. I need paper. Did it come with paper? It did not. I used to have... Oh, there we go. My leveling sheet. You can run an orbiter. I'm going to try running an orbiter on this. Okay. So I'm going to click adjust Z0. And then click Z- minus to set the distance. Okay, so I got to bring it down. I'm way up a bit. Okay, save. We're installing Cura right now. Uh, the manual is made out of paper. Yeah. No, I have um, this little sheet of, I don't know. It came with another printer and that was supposed to be my save return to the home page. Okay. And then just feed it in. It's saying turn the power off. Ooh, update content. Why aren't you working? Oh, it's because that's installing. Okay, I can't change screens while it's installing apparently. There we go. Update content. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Format SD card. Oh, hey, there's controller board. So it does have a U-disc, so I think you can plug just a standard USB into this guy. Um, I'll give that a shot. You should get a feeler gauge. I have feeler gauges at home, or at work. The thing is with a feeler gauge, when you're setting your nozzle offset, it doesn't matter. You could set your, no your, your nozzle offset using a 2x4. As long as you know the thickness of the 2x4 and you can adjust the that offset in the firmware, you're good. 
So you, if you put like a, a one, two, three block under there and you come down to your nozzle, just touches that one, two, three block. And then you go in your firmware and set it an inch shorter than that. You're good. So feeler gauges are really good though. I just don't have a set at home. I keep them at work. Put the, that in. Okay, filament load time. So I need some filament. Um, okay, come on, Kira, load. Skip. Close. Artist D Pro. No, we don't. Add printer. Okay, first off, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I need to fix this. I need to fix this. Do I have sensorless homing? Um, on this guy, no. I don't know if I don't, this doesn't use sensorless. There we go. That's better. Okay, add printer. Uh, add non-network printer. FL Sun. Super Razor. Add. There we go. Okay, so let's get some filament in this guy. So. Let me find some colors. So what are we gonna do? You know what? Since David uh, graced his, us with his presence, we'll go with some uh, Jesse, Jesse PLA, uh, blood red light glitter. And because this is a uh, Delta, I need to go for an adventure and climb up to the top so I can load filament in this thing. Uh, knock off Bontex. Sometimes they're indistinguishable from the real thing and sometimes they're junk. There we go. Okay. So, put the filament in. Tools. Change. In. Please wait for the nozzle to exceed. Okay. The interface is different. Where can I get the STL for your linear rail stops for your V2.4s? Oh, uh, the, the, at the upper stop, those are from the V2.2. They're in the V2.2 GitHub. Put the boat into the print head. It is. It, it came pre-installed. Oh, yeah, this is the switch wire. Yeah, once this is printing, I'll spin it around and whatnot so you guys can see. So we're waiting on it to heat up. Okay, the nozzle has exceeded. It's at 220. So am I... 
I gotta wait for it to stabilize. Will it auto feed? Wait for the nozzle to heat up, then click in. Oh, then click in, in. Okay, it's feeding filament and it's gonna take its time though. How y'all doing? Oh. It's spinning. You can't see because it's out of frame because this thing is bloody huge. Do we have a doggo visit? I could see if doggo's here, but I don't think so because my wife's at work and he is a... Nope, he's not there. Um, when my wife's at work, he's just mopey and he just hangs out at the front door until she gets home. So, will there be a boron delta? There you go. Yeah, that ain't gonna stink. Oh, there you go. There's your answer. <laughs> oh, uh, stop. Okay. Filament's loaded. Stop. Okay. Um, I think it comes with a 0.4 nozzle. I'm not 100% sure. So that is that, that is that. Stop, okay. Insert an SD card, click print. Select test G code to print. I'm not gonna do the test G code. Um, I can live adjust C. Okay, I'm gonna heat the bed up. Heat. Um, no, I want the bed. Oh. The bed 60. Nozzle, let me turn that down to 100. Okay, I will say the touchscreen on this is very responsive. Um, this is a probably the best touchscreen I've used on a printer to date. And other than, you know, clipper screen and a uh, panel do. Panel do's are like the gold standard in terms of functionality. I really like the panel do, how quick it responds and everything. Um, clipper screen's pretty good, but that's, you know, you could change different screens on clipper screen. Um, so clipper screen is, it depends on the screen you buy. But in terms of like commercial off the shelf machines, um, this is actually like, look, look at the contrast. You can actually see it from that way. Like it's actually pretty dang responsive. So I, you know what? Good on FL Sun, that's a good screen. Uh, what's the Z height? I got 330 of Z. So we got this little ducky guy. Um, we're not gonna print him at 0 0.2. 0 0.2 wall thickness, one inch. So two walls. So what does it come with? A 0.4 nozzle? Uh, manage printers, machine settings. 0.4 nozzle, okay. Ecliptic. Okay, close. Um, two walls. Top, bottom thickness, four layers, sure. Infill density, 10. Printing temperature, 200. Bed 60, sure. Print speed 60, infill speed 120, wall speed 60. We'll do outer wall 45, inner walls 80. Travel speed 300, initial air speed 30. Retract I'm not gonna screw with retraction because I don't know what this is because it's a Delta or a Bowden and whatnot. Um, all right, dang it, the bots are back. Report. Come on, mods. Where's my mods? I need mods. Where's my mods? Report. There we go. Up the acceleration. Yep, that's what we're going to do. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. So, where is speed? Enable acceleration control, print acceleration, ba 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 Oops. So 3,000, acceleration will go 5,000. I don't know, this is running Marlin. It's been a long time since I've, you know, 
played with Marlin. And Zed Hop wouldn't retract it. You know, I don't think that's an issue with here. Slice. Hour and 18. I could do that. So, um, I need a USB of some sort, don't I? Save to removable, eject. How do I have a black theme? Uh, you can adjust it in Cura. In Cura, you go to your preferences, configure Cura, uh, change it from Ultimaker to Ultimaker Dark, and then your eyes will thank you. Okay, so I gotta spin this a bit. So you guys can actually see. So, U-Disk, install. Okay, so it's not reading that. Oh, I know you gotta format them a certain way. Let me, maybe it's this one. Although there was things in there for an update, so maybe not, the USB might not be functional right now. I may have to do like a firmware update. So in that case, let me get a um, an SD card. Or actually, no, this came with an SD card. I'll just use the one that it came with, unless this works. Eject. USB firmware is on the SD card. Okay, you know what? We'll do that then. Um, Please back up the SD, format the SD card. How to switch to U-Disk. Okay, so you can either only use SD card or you can only use... Um, I see, okay, so you can only use SD card or you can only use this, so... Okay, format the SD card first, please. Refer We'll just use this. Um, do I have an SD card reader in here? Or an adapter? I do. Okay, so there's the adapter. Uh, where is my SD card reader now? Oh, it's upstairs. I think it's upstairs. Yep, it's upstairs. Okay, guys, um, I'll be back in a minute. I need to go get my SD card reader. So um, it's upstairs. I'll be back. Um, yeah. Back. Okay, so take that one out. That in. So 
the ghost duck. Okay. Eject. Print. Ghost duck. Print. Okay. So now I wait for everything to heat up. The bed should be clean because I took the protective packaging off. So we should be good there. If it breaks, it breaks. So now we're waiting for it to heat up. Less than 300 for a V01 kit. No. Uh, more engagement. Yes, engagement. YouTube metrics. Everyone like that smash button and I don't know. What else am I supposed to say? Poggers? Poggers in the chat? Uh, Twitch Prime? I don't know. Hey, look. It has a drawer. I never tensioned the belts. Hopefully the belts are tensioned well enough. F, yep, yep, so. Yeah. It, it's an ice cap. This is the one good thing that Timmy still kind of has is the ice cap. Am I going to regret just having printed all my 2.4 parts? No, you're good. Do I have a final V7? No, I have a uh, beta. That jammed. Oh, here we go. Well, the Zed's good. When am I going to clipperize it? Uh, not today. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow? I don't know. We'll see. I got the Urkfa is the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder is the priority for the next little while. Am I printing a skirt? Why is it printing a skirt? Oh, I hate skirts. Or brim. Skirts are fine. It's brims I, I can't stand. Brett James, for Canadian. Thank you. Appreciate it. What's the deal with the slick tool head? Oh, it, that's the uh, the new... Uh, it's... About... This will get Clipper at one point, and I'm going to throw an Orbiter on it, and uh, we'll see how well Clipper and Input Shaper can handle. Um, I need more light. I need more light. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. There we go. And they switch over the switch wire IDEX with twin. No, I'm not doing an IDEX with twin enraged rabbit carrot feeders. That's a little overkill. Uh, E3D says shipping in November. Yeah, let me. I think E3D put out a blog. Let me find it. So yes, while this is printing and I'm pulling this up, everyone, if you have not. Make sure you go check out Thangs. They're sponsoring the uh, stream today. Uh, link in the description. They have all, I'm sharing uh, Chaos Cortex's files, uh, profile I mean, on Thangs. Awesome creators. 
tons of stuff for Halloween. They're working on models every day. So make sure you're like, like them. Make sure you got to sign up, become a member, got to create an account or whatever it's called and hit like and follow. So you can see when they put out new stuff because like every day now they're coming out with awesome models for Halloween. So, uh, so go do that if you have not community. Actually, no, I shouldn't go to community just for the fact, uh, there we go. Oh, they got a video. There we go. Okay, let's start over. So that's the micro. This is the variant we have. And then they have the six, Revo six. And then the Hamera. So it looks like we are over extruding a bit, but that's okay. It's the first layer. Ta-da. Definitely over extruding a bit. It's okay, it's the first layer. Yeah, I've seen that post, maybe put this, I might put the uh, switch wire there and have the spools mounted up there. I don't know yet. I gotta figure out where everything's gonna go. Cause I'm gonna be moving some stuff around still like a workbench and whatnot. So we'll see how, uh, yeah. Am I going to post TikTok? Maybe? Uh, I, I hate TikTok, but yeah. I got to do the social medias if I want to be one of them influencer type people. Yeah, it's a spooky first layer. I think the nozzle's a little too close, but I ain't going to change it now. Ultra lightweight. The micro is half the mass of a V6. Yeah, it's, it's light. Each nozzle is color coded. So these are what they're going to have at launch. And obviously they're going to have different variants down the line. Engineered for safety. So there's your tech specs. So it's a 40 watt cartridge. Well, it's not a cartridge. It's a whole unit. So as you can see, it's this part right here is the same as the Hamera for the most part. There's your Revo 6 V6. It needs a lot less cooling. Like it, it only comes with a 25 millimeter fan. Revo Micro. Ooh. Besides the benefit of rapid nozzle swatting, swapping, the Revo Micro that make it ideal for squeezing extra motion system speed performance from your machine. Slick looking anodized black aluminum heatsink is the smallest lightweight. The Revo Micro is suitable for Bowden and direct drive setups. A nylon securing nut is used to keep it firmly in place and minimize excess wobbles. Other mounting designs are coming down the line and will be announced soon. Neat! Licensing, if you've been following earlier, open source is not dead at E3D, rapid change, Revo Cosi is open source. So, the heat sink is open source. So you can do whatever the hell you guys want with heat sinks. So anyone can make heat sinks or mounts for this. Um, but patents are also live. Okay, so the rapid change itself is patent pending. Um, uh, or when the product is fully launched, whatever is sooner. So they'll post the, so basically the cold side is open source and the hot side is, which that's kind of what I figured. I didn't know if they'll patent the actual nozzle brake itself or the, um, just like the heater and the, the spring and all that part, but we'll see. There you go. Uh, at the cool innovation, you see the Revo is still going to cost significantly less than anything else you've seen on the market. Um, you're looking at around 100 uh, pounds, so about 120 US for the full hot end, and that's heaters and everything included. So there you go, guys. If you wanted to know the price, you're looking at about 120 US for everything. Oh yeah, and that comes with four nozzles and the heaters. What's the point of the spring? It keeps tension on the heater, constantly pushing it down.
So for $120, you get everything you need in four nozzles. Um, on the honestly, in my opinion, the best performing hot end I've ever uh, had the pleasure of using. So for $120 US, you get everything in four nozzles. Yeah. And that doesn't come with anything but a fan. Not hating on Slice. I'm just pointing out that how could you... It's not a good time to be that. <laughs> Uh, how easy is the nozzle to, to put in? Um, I'm not going to show you mine because mine is beta. It's had some miles put on it and it's mounted and you can't, I can't show you everything on it. But in terms of how easy it is to swap the nozzle out, um, you literally just, you gotta, you gotta have the filament out. So you gotta heat it up, take the filament out, let it cool down. Oh my God, let it cool down. And then you literally just unscrew it. And then you just screw the new one in until it bottoms out. You don't need to torque it or anything. You just screw it in until it bottoms out and you're done. That's it. Heat it up, feed new filament in. And that's it. Uh, how's it doing against my expectations? It exceeded it. So I'm not going to do this. I'm just doing this so I don't accidentally burn my house down. One second. So can you guys not see that? Yeah, we're still good. Okay. So. Are you online? Yes, you are online. Okay. Uh, the heater is actually, yeah. Somebody said the heater's floating. It's not really floating. It's held in with the spring. So what happens is, is when you, uh, when you take the nozzle brake out, it's only like a detent in the spring holding it in position. So it's just kind of floppy, but once you screw the nozzle brake in, it uh, locks right up. So. second here focus Uh, 15 to 18, roughly, depending on your filament. The Dragon is still fine. Like, here's the thing. Like, if you're having no issues with your current hot ends, there's no real reason to upgrade. But going forward, yeah. Okay, let's have some fun. Um, you guys want to see a direct one-to-one -one comparison? So let me bring that up there, that up there. Bring you guys back up. Okay. Where's my temperature chart? Okay. So, um... How would you compare the Dragon Hot Ends to the Revo? Um, well, let's see here. So here's both hot ends are at room temperature. Uh, there's one degree difference, whatever, close enough, half a degree. Um, on the left, 
is Revo Beta. I'm prefacing this. This is a beta unit. On the right is a Dragon High Flow with a 50 watt. Left is Revo with its 40. Um, Sanjay said I could show video, so I don't think he'll care. Besides. Both these are PID tuned in 24 volts as well. This is how you sell a hot end. So remember, on the left is a Revo 40 watt, on the right is a Dragon High Flow with a 50 watt. Both 24 volts. There you go. So what is that? So 5850. So yeah, one minute. Still waiting. Still waiting. Oh, hey, made it. So we're going to let him stabilize. Part fan and where's the fan in here? Okay. Yeah, disconnected. Why did you disconnect? There you go. It's online. Okay. So ready? Part fan max. Part fan max. Turn the heaters off. Sorry, FL son. Um, your your printer is printing just fine. Thermal mass. It's actually much less thermal mass, but the heater is a better design and is more efficient because we're actually using well, E3D is using a proper integrated heater heater block instead of just taking an off the shelf item and shoving it in a block of copper, like everyone else has been doing. Which that's how everyone's been doing it. So when you go to something new, you can get by with having a smaller heater and a more smaller, more efficient design because you're able to respond quicker to the demands of like flow change and whatnot. So, uh, what thermistor? It's a standard, uh, what is it? 104 Semitech or whatever it's called. It's just a standard thermistor. The one that E3 has been using for a while, I guess. Um, uh, Tisha Fleur 3000. It, it more to do with thermal response. If, if you like to print fast, and you're printing like, you know, you, you run your infill at one speed, you run your outer walls at one speed, your, your flow rate's going to change. And when your flow rate changes like that, um, here, actually, let me scroll this up so you guys can see. Um, when your flow rate changes, the, basically, the quicker your hot end can respond, the more consistent your extrusion is going to be. So. So it's going to be a lot more consistent um, and to responses of speed up and slow down of extrusions. So if you start printing slow for a while, you're, you know, the extrusions not, you know, sucking heat out of the block and all of a sudden you go from printing, you know, an outer wall at 20 millimeters a second and a small detail to trying to push out, you know, 18 millimeters cubed a second at 120 millimeters a second of infill, the heater can respond to that and you're not going to have that lag in the filament sucking the heat out of the block. Uh, why it seems slower. I don't know. They're, 
Now, they're different controller boards. One's a spider, one's an octopus. They're both um, PID tuned to the same level. I don't know why it's different, but... I did check this on the same machine uh, before swapping it, and the chart looked roughly the same, where it was almost double the speed. And yeah, so 120, you get everything, including four nozzles. <laughs> Hey, look. Oh, yeah, we're building a Delta, guys. Look, it's a Delta. It's the FL, FL Sun Super Racer. It's doing Delta things. Yes, this is this is what the stream is about today, guys. <laughs> also, the extruder. No, you got to get that separate. Yes, there will be different printed parts. Obviously. No, there's no STLs. <laughs> The Delta Loud? Let me take out my noise-canceling earphones. Nope, my, uh, the part fans of my two Vorons are louder. Okay, let me turn the part fans off. Nope, Delta's not that loud. Not any where to the point I'd be eh, concerned. Um, so Christopher, here's the thing, when you could change the nozzles that easily, you actually, a lot of people found like speaking to people in the beta and whatnot, they're changing the nozzles a lot more because you can, you can change them so easily. Like it just makes it so much simpler. Make it go faster. You need to go to bed. It's like four in the afternoon, guys. Can you buy the Revo on AliExpress? Um... So speaking with, um, uh, yes, the NDA is kind of, nobody cares about the NDA right now, uh, but there is details I won't go into because um, I've spoken to people about it at E3D. Um, it's going to be kind of funny um, when people try to clone this thing because um, there is straight up like a lot, there is new stuff in it. This isn't some company decided to, you know, oh, hey, standoffs, that's new. Um, this is legit like they put a lot of time and work into the especially the heater um, assembly and that is not something that is out there and it's proprietary so yeah uh, I think the standard nozzles that will come with it are brass um, Trying to catch up. I got like a million DMs and whatnot going on. Will Revo do nozzle leveling? Um, once it's like rigid mounted, like once you got it screwed in all the way, it it uh, according to Sanjay, he himself has said that it is as strong as a V6. Um, in terms of if you decide to uh, crash it into the bed, so yeah, it's not any weaker than an existing V6 which with the titanium heat break is actually kind of strong or with the stainless steel heat break is actually kind of strong. As long as you go straight down. If you're going down an angle, eh, it might have an issue. Uh, it's the older store. I, I Both my V2s have the older single piece door that was common on like up to 2.2, I believe. Uh, any problems with the connectors on on this guy? Um, no, everything seems fine. I thought I turned Z-Hop on, but I guess not. So it's dragging. It's actually not able to keep up with the infill. What temperature are we running at? 220?
Uh, more thermal mass means more stable temperature is good for fluctuating events. Well, here's the thing. That used to be the ideal case back in the day when we were taking a heater block and shoving it in a block of copper. But when you design the entire, and like it's a solid state heater, like it's, it's fully enveloped and it's actually like designed for this purpose instead of, you know, again, something off the shelf that we're shoving in a block of copper. Um, you, the smaller 40 watt outperforms a larger heater block and a larger uh, chunk of brass or uh, copper or whatever, because it's able to respond quicker to changes in temperature. So it can, it can easily increase or decrease the uh, temperature. It uses less power. And also because the block is smaller, you can get fans in for part cooling closer than you could before because there's one less radiant heat and the block is like, look how small this is. And it's this size all around. So it's not like, you know, uh, there we go. Pull out the Skeeter. So it's not like the Skeeter here where you got this massive block where you can only get the fans so close and even now they're melting them. You got a block that's, you know, that big. So now you can bring your fans in closer, your, your ducts in closer. You can come in from any direction as long, well, except for the direction the wires come out, but you can spin it 360 so you can have the wires come out wherever you want. So you can have ducts coming in from every direction, hitting it equally. And because there's less thermal mass there, you're not going to melt your ducts as easily. So. Uh, John Clark, member for eight months. Oh, congratulations. Uh, not sure what this milestone message thing is. So this is a test. Hey, there you go. <laughs> I did not know that was a thing. I know uh, YouTube's trying to bring in a lot of like the Twitch features. So um, the sub with Prime, although it's not Prime. I don't know if you're got, I think if you got a YouTube membership, you get a free sub. I don't know if that's a thing. I don't know. So yeah, there there is a ton of little things with this design that will make things much better. Because again, it's actually something new and not just taking existing tech, putting it together in a different way. Because let's be honest, like a mosquito, yeah, a mosquito is a a good hot end and single-handed nozzle changes. But when you look at the numbers, um, I can't remember who, somebody on the Voron team did extrusion tests, flow rate tests, comparing a, a ton of different hot ends. A standard flow mosquito with its copper block performs within margin of error of a V6 with a copper block and a titanium heat break. You can only get so much out of using the same materials with the same design. We're all, you know, same nozzles, um, shoving a, a heater, a tube heater in a, into a chunk of metal. Um, until you move away from that ecosystem, you're going to be limited by that ecosystem. So, but yes, I know there's a few other, like the maxi watt is a circular heater. Um, there's a few other hot ends that kind of do almost like, uh, the hick, um, where is it? Where is my hick? Do I, I know I have it somewhere. Where is my hick? Here it is. So um, I have a Dragonfly high flow. Um, so this guy, same thing. It, it has a nozzle break where the nozzle um, is part is, you know, attached to the heat break. It's a single thing, but it's not quite the same because it's still using the old style of heater block and uh, a giant chunk of copper or brass in this or copper in this case um secondary like thermistors not attached to anything it's just in the block as well um so while it on paper it looks the same it, it doesn't really because it's not using a lot of the benefits of it it's just kind of oh we just kind of mash the nozzle and the heat break together which is good because you don't get oozing issues but it's not as big of a jump as you know the revo uh francisco five are monies. Thank you. Appreciate it. And Dragon World Striker, thank you for becoming a member. If I was in the situation right now, I'd be looking at the Revo. Mosquito is a dead design. Um, I have two sitting on a desk collecting dust.
We got pre-orders in November. So, Sanjay, if you're watching, I want one. I want many. The V6, here's the thing, okay, everyone harps on the V6 on being ancient, but again, a V6 with a titanium heat brake, a copper block, and a good nozzle, and Nozzle X, I've been using Nozzle X's for a bit now, I really like them, um, works just fine, it's just groove mount, and groove mount needs to go. So, right now, we are uh, limited to the micro, which mounts using the same, like, the effector style, where you have, like, threaded, and it screws it on top, that's what we're using in the current test tool heads that we're running um then you have the v6 one or the the revo six i guess they're calling it that is for you know drop in with anything with a v6 but other designs are coming so who knows maybe they're coming out with you know rigid mount or magnetic mount or uh, i'm assuming there'll be a variant for a tool changer like that's the thing if they're licensing it where the whole cold end is open source if Bond Tech wants to make um, an all-in-one version of the LGX that uses this. You could do that because all they would have to do, you have your your LGX, you got your adapter plate. All you would need is an adapter plate swap, and it would be, uh, or whatever version of the LGX is the all-in-one. Um, but they could do that on paper because that they're allowed to, right? Which that's what the way I figured they would do it, where. You, you patent the, the the secret sauce that makes it special that you spent all the time doing the R&D on. Um, and then you let everything else go open source, right? To help the community. So. Uh, what is it? Oh, it's the infill. I've got like one little strand of... The infill's not... I'm overshooting the infill. And so because of that, the infill's curling up and it's like dragging on the nozzle every time I go across. What do I think of the hick? Um... I wouldn't buy one now, but the Hick works good. Um, it's just, the only reason to use the Dragonfly Hick is if you always plan on running a fat nozzle fast. So. Uh, cheers, Corvid. Would you put a Superfly Sherpa Orbiter on the Delta? Um, I've got an Orbiter. I am putting an Orbiter on this at one point. I'm probably going to run it stock for a bit, get a profile for it. Um, but, oh shoot. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I just realized this isn't good. Um... <laughs> Oops. Maybe that's why it's catching. Okay, um, how do I fix that? How do I fix that? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Pause. Pause printing. Okay. Um... Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. Okay. Okay. There we go. Maybe that's why it wasn't working too good. Uh, pliers, 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 pliers. There we go. Uh, resume. There we go. All fixed. All fixed. Uh, all fixed. 
Uh, have you? How are the CFPC? The PC CF parts are holding up just fine on Toasty. Um, they are working just fine. Uh, John Clark, twenty dollars. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, buy a bottle of whiskey. I have whiskey. I got it upstairs, but it's daytime, so I shouldn't be drinking whiskey. Uh, no more hundred day, hundred degree days. Oof. Yeah, that's hot. That's way too hot. Okay, back to printing. Maybe that's why I was having other extrusion issues. Pause works really good on this model, by the way. Just so you know. Uh, Dragon or Dragonfly for the V01. If you're getting the like LDO kit, just use the Dragonfly. Functionally, in terms of performance, the Dragon and Dragonfly are exactly the same. The only difference is you get the uh, one-handed nozzle change with the tool. Um, yeah. Am I involved in Voron R&D? Uh, yes. I am an admin on the Voron Discord, an admin on the Voron subreddit that I don't go on ever. Um, and the uh, I am on the Voron team, I guess you would say that. How does the top of the hot end look? Um, are you talking about the FL Sun or the Revo? If you're talking about the Revo, the top looks exactly like the either the V6 or it looks like the... Um, uh, and hot end. Da, 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 da. Let's see if I can find the block. I don't think they make it. Yeah. So right now it looks like this: the micro, the top of the 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 Revo micro, which is like the beta version we have, um, looks like this. It mounts like this, where it has like it's like the Delta effector style, where that goes through a hole, and then you have a nut on top that screws down to tighten it into place. Yeah. Rotation is not an issue on this because you're screwing it by hand and it's the force of the spring pushing down that keeps everything locked up and there's nothing unturning your nozzle while it's printing. Um, it stays locked up. So if the whole thing were to spin, you know, bearing the wires hanging, you know, the, there's wires coming out of it. But if, you know, you had wireless heating in thermistors, the whole thing could spin 360 while it's printing and it would not be an issue. As long as you don't, you know, move on your Z. Oh, the FL Sun, the top? Yeah. It, it, it's a V6 uh, Volcano clone, basically, in there. Buying a glass of scotch, I want a... Well, by the time it gets here, the, the glass would probably be empty. Francisco, five. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Nero, do you plan to clip rise this Delta? Yes, this will get clipper and I will put input shaper on it and an orbiter because why not? What is the Pico? I gotta look at the Pico, because everyone keeps saying the Pico hybrid. Okay, one, well, it's Kickstarter. Don't ever support anything on Kickstarter. Yeah, so see the Pico, it's still using Yeah, see, so it's still a separate thermistor, a separate heater. So yeah, this is just a smaller V6, or like that kind of tech. It's still the same tech. And all metal, well, the Revo is all metal. There is no PTFE liner option on the Revo. Okay. 
Oh. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have one. How come nobody tries to include input shaper in a Marlin? Because most Marlin machine controller boards don't have enough oomph to run input shaper. Even a Raspberry Pi Zero can barely run input shaper and half the time it crashes. So you, you know, we're leveraging the fact we have a quad core CPU on the Raspberry Pi to run the input shaper. I think they're coming around with like a manual version, like how you can manually tune input shaper without the accelerometer. Um, I think Marlin's getting something like that, but it, it won't be as accurate. With the extruder system, like, are you talking about putting like an afterburner on it or like using an M4? Either or would be good, in my opinion. Francisco 5. Yeah, Deltas are cool. Like, it is cool to watch. Like, watching this actually in action is kind of cool. I will say that. Oh. Hey, get over here. Hey, you want to say hello? hello. Want to say hello? Are you back from daycare? Hey, what's this? What's this? What's that? Is that a printer? What's that doing, eh? Oh, Coda. Ah, Coda, come here. There's the doggo. There we go. There's your doggo. Covered by. Hey, hey! Don't grab. <laughs> don't grab the Delta. It's moving. Let's grab it then. I can't move the cameras, guys. Sorry. I'm, I've got a baby on me. Hey, it didn't shift though. So give the, uh, the Super Racer credit. It didn't shift from a, uh, a three year old grabbing the uh, effector arm. What's all this stuff, eh? What's up? What's up? Are we gonna go out for dinner in a bit? Are you hungry? You hungry? You gonna say bye bye? Say bye bye. Say bye. Bye. There you go. There you go. Go with mama. Yeah, it didn't shift, so that's... No, no, no. Oh, you gonna turn the light off? Bye, Calvin! Okay. Uh, where's Duff? Francisco5, hello, little Nero. His name's Calvin. Duff, thirteen ninety nine. kiddo and doggo. Okay, I gotta bring them both in at the same time. That's how I, that's how I make bank. I gotta bring them both in. Okay. How many kids? I have one kid. And only one. One and done. Uh, yes, the... the uh, pull it out again. For those that don't know, if you're looking at the nozzle brake, this portion right here, the part that actually screws into the heat sink, is the same as the Hemera uh, heat brake, which I have somewhere, but I'm not going to go dig it out. So... One kid and 12 printers. Oh, God. All the printers. What does the nozzle taste like? Brass. With a, with a hint of ABS. Isa, no, no. That is KVP. Good year. Yes, the Hemera is on the Ender. I gotta finish wiring it up. I just haven't had time because I've uh, been playing with other stuff. That's the downside when you don't do YouTube full time and you try to actually do content. It's like, I only have like an hour free today. Do I wanna work on something or, you know, actually just sit down and relax before work? 
Uh, inspired me to build a V a V01. Nice. Uh, thanks for showing that. It's not intimidating. It is not hard. It's honestly the instructions on the the zero one are probably one of the better ones. They're getting better. The Okay, one of my uh, part fans isn't going. There we go. One of my part fans became unplugged. I think that was when it was too short there. That's probably why it looks a little poopy in some spots. Uh, how does the new afterburner taste? Perfect. Uh, I work in a tool shop. Build plastic injection molds. What are we at right now? We got 400 people here. Oh my God. Uh, if I'm going to get a hot end, any hot end for a new printer, should I say F it and just get the Revo? Um, do you need a hot end right now? That's the thing. If you can wait till the Revo comes out personally, I would say wait for the Revo, but they're doing pre-orders and then they're, you, you might get it by the end of the year. It looks like. Um, cause obviously there's going to be OEM shipments they got to take care of. And it, it's, it, it, you're looking at the end of the year. Um, I'm hoping I can go, Hey, I need one for review. Send me one early, but I, I, I have no, I have no guarantees of even that, or I don't even know if they're going to be doing that. So it's kind of like, I wish they would be more available sooner, but we have no idea. I have no idea. So if you can wait, wait and get one. That's what I would say. If you, you know, bought a hot end last weekend, you had the worst timing in the world. Like, I don't know. Uh, what are the advantages of a Delta? For the longest time, Deltas were pretty much the fastest. I think they still technically are. Um, the fastest kinematic. So these, because deltas are meant to have a light tool head and you have three motors working in tandem, you can run these really fast. Um, right now, the fastest speed benches, I think, um, if Nitram's still doing it, um, I don't know if like an O-Drive powered thing has beaten it, but traditional 3D printing with like normal stepper motors, I think is uh, on a delta by Nitram. And it's just like an, a castle with like a tri-gorilla board running clipper. What are we at anyways? 61%. So what I'm waiting on is, cause I've seen people mention about this in like the discord and whatnot. So I'm going to make a tool changer that just changes nozzles. I'm waiting on that. If you need a hot end right now, um, whatever one you can get a good deal on. The Dragon and Dragonfly are both functionally the same. Um, if you're all, if you're concerned about patents, get a Dragonfly because it doesn't encroach on any of Slice's patents. So if you're worried about that, do that. Um, but functionally, they both work exactly the same. Why I chose the Orbiter? Um, because I already had the Orbiter. And LDO gave it to me a while ago, and I feel bad for not using it on anything, and now I finally have something I can kind of put it on. Because all my other printers are morons. <laughs> uh, how do I feel about nozzle sizes? 0.4. I run 0.4 on pretty much everything. Um, I want to get a 0.5 Nozzle X for uh, Toasty. Because um, right now it's got a 0.4 nozzle X and I want to get a 0.5 just so it has a little bit um, less back pressure issues with the filled filaments I feed it normally, like carbon fiber. And then Tallboy runs a 0.6. But speaking of nozzles, um, Bontech sent me some things. So this showed up in the mail. Um, I had no idea this was coming. I literally just get a notification from Bontech saying, hey, um, like a, a FedEx notification saying they're sending me something. 
Um, and I got these guys. So these are Bontex um, fancy nozzles they made that have like, I don't know if you can see that. They've got like three channels in the back. So it like splits the filament and then it like remerges at the nozzle tip. And it's like supposed to allow it to melt quicker or more efficiently or something. So you can do like print faster. So I have a, a, a 1.8 millimeter nozzle. <laughs> So I think I'm going to put one of these in uh, Tallboy and see how it handles. But it's like funky because when you look through it, you can see like the split. So it's supposed to help with like heat transfer or something. Why do they make the boxes like that? What's wrong with the box? It, it's a box. What's wrong with the box? They use the same box for everything. So they only have to stock one box. Economies of scale. What do I think of the Trident FFC mod kit? I don't even know what the Trident FFC... What's the FFC? Don't use acronyms when I don't know what the acronym is. FFC mod kit. The heck is an FFC? FFC mod. Oh, the, the cable... Okay, um... Personally, I'm not a fan of ribbon cables. It's these kind of cables. Personally, I, I know it looks clean and I've seen some pictures of builds that use them and it does look clean. It's just, personally, I'm not a fan of ribbon cables. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I just, you know, I, I'm not a huge fan of them. That's personal, that's personal. Um, I haven't used them. The only printer I have that has used them has been the um, Artist D Pro that I have. And I, I, I'm just, I don't know. Easy to replace. Yeah, you'd have to replace the whole cable. And the thing is, if you need to add something down the line, because, oh, hey, um, the new Afterburner has LEDs in the tool head. So now you need uh, three wires because they're color controlled. So add three wires. Or hey, now you want to run a, a clicky probe and you need to add two more wires. Like, that's the thing. Yep, that's not what I wanted. One, that one. Yes, it's the Delta. Yeah, I think what I, I might do a video where I just sit down and talk to the camera about all the things about the Revo that I've like come across in the beta, why I like it, some of the advantages I think of it. I don't know. I might do that. Um, I know I, a bunch of people are, I've seen a lot of questions that I've already answered about it, so I might do a standalone video on it where I just talk. I won't show it printing or anything um, because let's be honest, it's a chunk of metal moving and plastic comes out of it. You've seen a printer print, so... I'll just use like stock footage. <laughs> um, oh, I missed some, I missed some, I missed some. Uh, Francisco, $5, thank you, appreciate it. Ribbing rainbow cables are cute. Cool. Uh, $7.99 for a beer. I'm gonna go out for, actually me and the wife and the little guy are gonna go out for dinner after this. Oh no, the, the sex bots are back and they're speaking Russian. Suka bliet. Goodbye. Suka bliet vodka Putin. There you go. Oh, Doc's here. Everyone say hi, Doc. Have I seen the Hermit, hermit Crab? Yeah, B, uh, Big Tier Tech wants to send me one, but I, I, I don't, 
I don't have a printer to put it on and it's the same thing as the uh, Wham Bam Mutant only they uh, Big Tree Tech now has CAN support in theirs which not all boards can take advantage of but we'll see if that'll be a thing so it's like the same thing it's a it's a hot plate it allows you to you know change toilet the thing is like now with Revo the fact that you can change the nozzle with just you know a finger and a thumb and it being cold how easy it is to change a nozzle why would you be changing your whole tool head I don't know and I'm not a huge fan of running like lasers on my 3d printers because they don't have enclosures for lasers and I ain't running a CNC on my uh, 3d printer so did I finish the Oski tone no I have not I have the parts printed for the um, Oski tone for the I've hid my address don't worry um, I have the pr parts printed for the APC um, I might do a member stream next week if I have chance or the week week after um, but the Oski tone um, the second week of October I have the whole week off vacation I'm gonna do a daytime stream and we're gonna build the uh, the scout the Oski tone scout uh, the Revo doesn't have an induction heat. no it's a solid state heater I think it's called So yeah, so two weeks from now, I'll do another daytime stream because I have the week off. Um, we'll build the Oski Tone. Um, and then I'm going to try and do a members only stream that week as well. And maybe we'll do the APC and do like a QA or something. Buy whiskey yet. I did I have some Gibson's upstairs but it's daytime so I'm not gonna crack it open at 4 30 in the afternoon what else is in the box we got a, okay uh, we got filament it did come with filament and it came with like it probably like was a 100 200 gram spool or something um, it comes with a whole extra hot end so I have an extra heater here an extra thermistor um, it comes with a bunch of little clips that are 3d printed um, what else that's it and then we have a whole other um, volcano. But it, you know what? This ain't a volcano. This is not a volcano. They have, oh my God, what is this? Um, it's tight. That's what it is. This is not a volcano. It's a... Uh, Where's my adjustable at? Ah, there we go. Okay, it uses volcano nozzles. Let me grab, let me grab my volcano. Is it a volcano? Okay, so. This is the, the heater that came with mine, or the uh, the block. So here's the nozzle. There's the nozzle brake. So it's PTFE line. So the one I have in there right now is PTFE. So there's the nozzle, but yeah, it's the same size it looks like. No, is that the same size? I don't know, I'll have to take it apart. But here's a volcano, so that is not a volcano block. Yeah, that's not a volcano, so it doesn't come with a volcano. Huh. Is this hot and all metal? No, this is PTFE lined, apparently. Most most cheap print most printers ship with a PTFE hot end, uh, simply because it's easier to make a cheaper PTFE hot end than it is to make a cheap, good all metal hot end. But it does come with an extra, so that is good at least. Yeah, it's a short volcano, basically.
Uh, any news on the Doom Cube? I don't. I don't follow the Doom Cube project, um, so I don't know. What are we at right now? Seventy-seven percent. We got. I don't know how much time is left. The estimate keeps jumping all over the place. Uh, with a CR10 type. Okay. Well, the thing is, though, this is a a V6, pretty much. Like, I don't know how it's mounted. How is it mounted? How is that mounted? Okay, it looks. How the heck is that? It's held at the bottom. It looks like. I don't know. I'm sure I could fit an orbiter on it somehow. I'll make it work. I'll make it work. What's the story on gantry backers? Some people really like it. I have never found a, a need for it. I've never had issues with like my gantry bending under heat. I don't know. It's never been something I've really looked into because it's, it's never been an issue I've had on any of my machines, so. Oh, somebody just sent me this. So this is, this is not, this doesn't look good on a certain company, but remember Revo 120 comes with your heater, comes with the fan, comes with, well, the heater and the fan and the thermistor, the four nozzles, and it's, in my opinion, the best standard flow hot end you can get, and they are working on a high flow variant, um, is 120 US. Minimum viable for a, Mosquito. You are looking at 249 US for minimal viable for a mosquito. So you can buy two Revos almost. Yeah, you can buy two Revos. Oof. Oof. What am I printing? I am printing a ghost duck. We are printing a ghost duck. And it is from, if you want to print your own ghost duck, make sure you click that link in the description because this is one of the many Chaos Cortex models that have come out over the past couple days because they are putting out a model a day for Spooktember and Spooktober. So there's all kinds of duckies, pumpkins, Ghostbusters, Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, yeah. So click the link in the description because they're sponsoring the show today, Thangs is. And Chaos Cortex is one of my favorite uh, creators on Thangs. So make sure you sign up and get, get yourself some Thangs. Yeah, there's a blob on the front. It looks like that's an overhang. I probably should have had some support there, but YOLO. Uh, Mosquito is 149 and it comes with nothing. It, I think it comes with a fan. 
So you still have to buy their heat. Well, you don't have to use their heater and their thermistor or nozzles, but you still have to buy heater, thermistor, nozzle. Um, you have to buy the boron paste, which is like 10 bucks. Um, uh, same artist I've been liking. Yes, the same person, uh, Little Mike. There's a few creators on things that put out a lot of like constant good stuff. Um, MZ4250, I believe he does all the uh, like D and D and like tabletop models. It's another good one. Um, is it? Yeah, they. Let me see if I can find it. E3D. No, I don't want to go spool 3D. E3D. Um, they have announced they're coming out with a uh, a smaller Hamera. So, ba -ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba, I don't know where it is. I think it might be on their Twitter. But they're coming out with a smaller Hamera that's like a lighter, 100 grams lighter, I think. Oh, I think it's on their Twitter. You gotta be careful. Keep forgetting, you gotta be careful on Twitter because somebody that you follow could like something that should not be on, you know, the screen. Yeah, here you go. So they are working on a more compact Hamera. So a smaller motor. But as you can see with the nozzle, like the, the heater block, how much smaller the heater block is, it gives you so much more options for getting cooling, uh, park cooling fans in there and ducts. No, I'm not, I'm running this Clipper, I'm running this uh, Delta stock. So this is stock for now. What are the advantages and disadvantages of the rough? Um, it's texture. Personally, I like smooth PI because it's a sticker and you can easily replace it with textured PI. Yeah, it grips a bit better, but the thing is, is if you screw it up, like you, you destroy it, you can't really replace it. You have to like sand it flat and put a sticker over it. So personally, I'm more of a fan of the, uh, of the uh, textured or untextured PI. That's just me. Uh, can I check if the board is a Robin Nano? Um, I, I see Maker... Oh wait, no, here, I got it right here. Um, this is the board I got. Motherboard wiring diagram. It's a whatever this is. That's the board I got. I think it has 2209s. In it. Uh, can I see through the top? No, I cannot. I know, it's got red LEDs. If that tells you anything. <laughs> Can I recommend any shops on Alley? Um, Energetic is my go-to for AliExpress PEI. What's my full-time job? I work at a tool shop that builds plastic injection molds. 
Something inside me screams E3D may take my money next year. Yes, I, I need to get several Revos. Although, honestly, like, Toasty Boy will probably keep the, uh... The dragon I have inside of it with the Nozzle X. Um, just because that runs without a sock and I do run hotter temperatures. Like, I print, I printed at 320 in there before. And the uh, Revo is only rated to 300. Um, now, I'm sure it could go higher, but if they say 300, stick with 300. Uh, Tallboy will probably, I don't know, until they come out with a high flow variant, Tallboy will probably stick with the high flow dragon. Um, Switchwire will probably get one, though. So we'll, we'll see. It, it depends. Like, we're, it's still pretty early. I haven't used the production unit. I've only played with the uh, the beta ones, remember. So, well, the beta one that I have. So. Just waiting on the little ducky to finish, and then we're at 92% of the print done. It's printing pretty good. I don't know. It's a Delta. It's doing Delta things. There you go. This needs some googly eyes on it, that's for sure. Um, in terms of print quality, like, here's the thing. Print quality difference isn't like, oh my god, this is amazing. It It's cleaner. I will say it is cleaner. Um, simply for the fact that you have more control over flow. So I found I did have a little bit less stringing issues. Um, and, like, smaller details came out a little bit more consistent. Like, really small details came out a little bit more consistent. Um... Because it wasn't over or under extruding due to temperature, uh, overheat or underheat because of, you know, rapid changes in temperature or of flow rate. But it's not like you can put two models side by side and be like, oh my god, this is amazing compared to the other one. It's, it's, it's slightly better. It, what it comes down to is you'll never have to heat tighten anything. You don't have to worry about ooze anymore. Um, it's much more reliable. It's much more consistent. Uh, it's a better design in terms of how you can mount it in terms of, you know, how you could route uh, ducting for cooling. It needs a lot less cooling. Like it only ships with a, uh, let's see if I can find it. I don't know where I put the little box. That's not the box. Yeah, here we go. Here's my E3D box. Okay, so your toolkit for everything E3D. So this is, you know, your standard afterburner front. You've you've all seen this. There's your afterburner. There's your 40 millimeter part fan. All this thing needs to keep cool, um, and this is what ships with it, and it works just fine. Um, is that guy? That's all you need for part fan, or for hot end fan cooling. So, there's, oh, not that my camera's over. So yeah, so there's your 40 millimeter fan, and this is all you need for a Revo. And it comes with the little clip-on thing, so it clips right onto your, your heat sink. It is tiny. It is tiny. I think it's 25, 2510 or um see yeah, 2010. It's a 2010 fan. And it's 5 volt. And it was actually kind of cool cuz they actually shipped this little uh 5 volt buck converter. Yeah, tw uh, 24 to 5 volt buck converter for the fan itself. Um, there will still be support for existing tool heads. Like, it's not like, oh, all of a sudden we're going to delete all the files on the GitHub for everything else and 
ignore everything going f further in the future. Like, there is still going to still be the files out there. What is this, a fan for ants? No, it's a fan for a great hot end. Ooh. How's the printer be going? Ah, there's a little ducky. It went together fine. The printer went together fine, other than the little hiccup of me routing the wires around the, the filament feed. How much of a weight savings? They said it, it's like half the weight of a V6. I think it's half the weight of a copper block V6, if I'm not mistaken. You're not going to fit a full afterburner in a V01. How does that fan keep up? It's because it doesn't need that much cooling. It's the, like, compared to a bimetallic heat break, like a titanium heat break actually works better. Like when you actually look at the numbers of heat transfer, a titanium heat break works better than a surgical steel bimetallic heat break. Um, so the way that it's designed, and also because now we don't have this massive chunk of metal that we jammed a heater in because we have to get thermal mass to get proper heat transfer. Now that we have a smaller heater that's working more efficiently and is able to transfer the heat from a, of a smaller heater into the plastic more efficiently because it's fully enveloped, um, you have less dead heat in the heater block, which means less heat is going back up, right? It's not radiating off as much heat. Um, estimated print times, uh, narcoleptic frog, make sure your, uh, accelerations are matching what your accelerations are in the firmware. So if you're running like a stock printer that has like firmware limited to like a thousand millimeters a second acceleration and your super slicer profile has it higher than that, it's, or lower than that or vice versa, it's going to be basing the time wrong. Oh, hey, it's done. Ah, uh, he's got a little wispy hair. It's going all the way up. Okay, it goes all the way up, I guess. Print is complete. Okay. Let that cool for a little bit. I pre-purchased my SR and have had it for four months. This is the most goof-proof printer I've ever had. Honestly, for a first print, this came out pretty good. The only issue I had was the, uh, a little bit of issue with the part cooling fan which makes sense because now one side is a little bit funkier than the other for a bit of it. Um, but hey, that's my fault for uh, accidentally wrapping the uh, the cable around the filament. <laughs> but that happens. It's a ghost ducky. Let that bed cool off, pull it off, and then we shall... Uh... I don't think this is going to fit. I wanted to put this here but I got to put it in the corner. This has to go in the corner. I can't put it any, or you know what? I can put it down here because I now have that there. So I can put this over there. So if I move, yeah, I can move Tallboy over, put this where Tallboy is. So yeah, so Tallboy will get moved down. The Delta will go there because I literally can't put it on this desk. I don't have enough height. Yeah, so that will move over. This can go there, that goes there, the delta goes there, or the switch wire goes there. Yeah, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. How much ghosting does it have? Ooh, spooky. They use a ceramic ring. This is not um, a commercial off-the-shelf type heater. It's a solid-state heater, like, yeah. What is a Raptor here? What is a Raptor hot end? Like proto print. Products, Raptor hot end. More information. Okay, so it's got a nozzle break. Okay. Super fast, easy maintenance. So they got a ceramic heater type thing. Okay, so they do have a separate thermistor and they got that Y. Okay, this is different. It looks the same, but the internals are different. Um, 
Yeah. There, there, there is some differences that I can't say. I don't think I can say. Yeah, there is definitely some differences. Knowing how long this has been in, like the, the Revo has been in development and what went into certain aspects of the development, um, it, there is differences, I will say. What firmware is running on this machine? Is, this is stock. This is straight up stock. We built it earlier in the stream today. This is completely stock. It is running Marlin 2.0.8. This is a really nice touchscreen. I actually, this is actually, I, I give props to FL Sun. Um, this is a really nice touchscreen. Like it actually is like a really good touchscreen. I'm giving them props. This is a good touch screen. And I, I like this, I like this. Cause when you're like, I, well, the thing I hate about touch screens is like it's mounted to your printer and you're trying to like move it around and watch your first layer and you can't see the button you're hitting cause it's a touch screen. You have no tactile feedback. So you gotta be hoping you're hitting the right button. Cause the last thing you wanna be doing is like down point one, down point one, down point one. And then you actually hit down 10, right? So being able to actually like bring it with you while you're doing that, that's nice. That is nice. I I like that. That's actually probably my favorite feature on this thing so far. I don't think that'll work with Clipper though, which will suck, but. The temp is red text on black background. That's not too bad. It, it, it's readable. Let's give the, uh, the spatula. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's gonna scuff the bed. I don't wanna scuff the bed, it's a brand new bed. Where is my... Cool the bed off a little bit quicker. Uh, your SR, yo Jimbo, does it, the screen work with Clipper? What surface? It's that textured uh, carborundum surface that's common. And then it's a probably a PCB bed heater underneath. Okay, so the screen doesn't work. That sucks. That sucks. Ultra base. Yeah, it's. Ultra Brace is like a brand name. It, it's an it's a carborundum. It's basically like a it almost looks like a carbon fiber material on it. Ooh, that is really on there. Maybe I should have. Oh, there we go. There we go. Like maybe I should have actually uh, up the Z instead of letting it mush into the plate. Skirt off. Where is my there it is. Get yourself a deburring tool, guys. It's super handy. When you, uh, you gotta trim. is our ducky there's our ghost duck and some lovely red sparkle what is it blood red 
Uh, there we go. Blood Red Jesse PLA. Spooky. Spooky Duck is spooky. Okay. I'm going to end the stream in a couple minutes here. Um, if anyone has any questions before I end it, we've got like five minutes. I'll give you guys five minutes. 5.15, I'll call it. So, last couple minutes of the stream, open floor if anyone wants me to go over anything or talk about anything or look at anything. Uh, Teaching Tech made a video about Clipper on the essay. I've seen that. I didn't watch it, but I've seen it. Have you tried Noga deburring tool for plastic? I have not. I just have these. Like, I've got one of these at work, too. They're just metal deburring tools. Best favor of ice cream. Cookies and cream. Where did my paper towels go? I had paper towels in here. What mods are you planning? The only thing I'll, I'll probably do to this is put Clipper on it, and um, which I kind of don't want to now because I lose the screen, but I'll probably put Clipper on it and uh, direct feed. How far is the wiring on the IRCFA? The same as it was on uh, Friday. I haven't touched, or Saturday. I haven't had a chance to uh, touch it yet. It has been, uh, it's only Monday. No, it's Tuesday. Toppings are best on hot dogs. I'm a fan of like just ketchup. Ketchup, sometimes barbecue sauce, cheese, and uh, bacon at times. Depends on the type of hot dog, too. I'm trying to get good lighting for this picture. There we go. Spooky ghost duck is spooky. Cool. Saturday night, Urkfa wiring or 1.1 stream? Uh, well, it'll be back, Friday we'll be back on the Urkfa. Um, I gotta print off the new tool head. I'll probably be doing that tomorrow. Um, so new tool head I gotta print. I gotta wire that up. There, there's a bunch I gotta do, but that will probably be... Uh, Saturday's stream is continuing with the Urkfa. Yep. Uh, it's the 1.1. It's the newest version of it. Hints on the new extruder. It's red. Um, uh, my graphs had different time spans, but the thing is, if you look at the actual temperature, the it the Revo heated hit 240 a good minute before the. Uh, before the other one, before the dragon. Like it still hit it much quicker. Uh, for the cable wraps, um, I use the cheap stuff. Um, if you're like, there's two types of cable wraps. There's uh, the mesh kind, which uh, I, I think I have them all put away. Yeah, I, don't, I have it all put away. The spiral wrap is good for like under the hood where nobody sees. You just want to manage it because you can easily just wrap it. And then there's like the sleeve that has like a slot in it so you can cover the whole cable. I have that on the Ender 3. They did not hit 240 at the same time. Do I have to pull up my old, my stream to... Uh, let's see. They start, okay. Wow, Inception, hi. Okay, we're looking at this again. So, yeah, see 240 and this is still 180. So see, look, like this one's 170. And like, yeah, I started them at slightly different times, but they were pretty close already. It's like, Ready? So 240, 240. Ready, ready, ready. Wow, I talked for a while before I started it. 
Okay, so 240 on, 240 on, and there it goes. Yeah, the, the graph time span's a little compressed, obviously. Because they're, they're running different versions of Clipper. So I'm assuming like the default settings. I haven't changed them. It's just that's whatever is default. But if you look at the temperatures, like 120, 70, 130, 75, 140, 82. Like it. Like the, the Z is the same. So this is already like 175 and this is only at 112. So yeah, it does heat up. Yeah, chatception. You guys are talking on top of each other. So yeah. Okay, I'm gonna call it there, guys. I hope you enjoyed the stream today. That was fun. Um, turn that off. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, DC Sublime, $20. Thank you, appreciate it. Have a great dinner, enjoy it with the fam. I will. Change the board. I might change the board. Um, I have a crap ton of octopuses. Um, so we'll see. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. And a free ad for E3D all in one stream. Honestly, here's the thing. Um, I've been called, I've already been called an E3D shell. Um, I have no loyalty to any company. As you can tell, I used to like slice stuff and then mosquitoes or dragons came out and then I like dragons and now the Revo's out. Now I like the Revo. I like whatever's good at the time. And if it's something I think is good, I'll say it's, I think it's good. Like I have no brand loyalty at all, except for Voron because I'm part of the Voron team. So there's a little bit of, you know, I'm part of this project. Of course, I'm going to like this project. I wouldn't be part of this project if I didn't like the project. But in terms of like components for a hot end, if something comes out tomorrow that's better than the Revo, I'll probably say that's better than the Revo. Like, I don't know. No, I'm on no company's payroll. The only company that I'm on is payroll is Thanks because they're sponsoring the stream tonight. So before you leave, make sure you check out the description and go check some of those awesome Chaos Cortex models. Print them yourselves and make sure you go through them. Like the ones you like. And hit follow on Chaos Cortex. That way you can find out all the times they upload new models because they're doing like daily models all through October. So, yeah, I threw in the ad spot there. I did that. But they are awesome. So make sure you go uh, give them a like. So I'm going to go enjoy uh, the rest of my evening. I'm going to go out. We're going out for dinner. I got to go find somewhere to eat, but we're going out for dinner. I have the day off work today. Um, this has been the FL Sun Super Racer. Thank you, FL Sun, for giving me this printer to build. It is massive. Holy crap, it is massive. I'm going to have to find somewhere to put it. But I have a Delta now, so this is cool. I'll print something big on it, I think. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, for anyone who donated during the stream, you're awesome. Uh, for anyone who became a member during the stream, you're also awesome. Anyone who subscribed. If you have not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Ring the bell. Um, like that smash button on the way out. Everyone here is awesome. You're all awesome. Enjoy the rest of your week, not weekend. It's not the weekend yet. Enjoy the rest of your week. Um, be safe out there. Wash your hands. Cheers. <laughs>